Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. For 35 years, New Life has been transforming lives one at a time thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there. Welcome to New Life Live. Glad you're with us here today. Joining me, Mark Cameron. Hey, Steve. Dr. Alice Benton. Hi, gentlemen. Two people that uh, they know their stuff. And if you've got stuff, they want to know it. And then they'll tell you what they know about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and we could have a bit of a breakthrough here. Wouldn't that be amazing? Now, when we come back from the break in just a minute, because it's always a short, I am going to share with you one of the greatest things ever that happened to me. I gave a mother some advice. She took it, and the result is a restoration of a daughter. And it had nothing to do with our resources it was just what she did. So we'll do that after the break. But first of all, I want to tell you that folks are responding to year-end giving. If you're on our mailing list, you are receiving a letter from me, and on the outside is a picture of Indiana Jones with a whip. And the <laughs> caption is, Honoring the Faith of Indiana Jones. Not... Uh, so, not Harrison Ford, but Indiana Jones. So, if you get that letter, I hope you'll open it, and I hope you'll respond to it. Because, you know, it takes faith to receive the evidence that God is real. If you don't ever step out in faith, you need, you'll need you never get to experience. The Bible says faith is the evidence of things hoped for. That doesn't make sense. Unless you understand that in faith, we move and do something that isn't safe in the terms of the world. And then what God has been promising shows up. And in Malachi 3, he, Malachi, <laughs> he tells us to test him on this. Yes, he says, he does. test me mm -hmm. on this. So anyway, I hope if you get that letter, you'll uh, open it, read it, and respond to it. It is year-end giving time, and I hope you'll be thinking about us here at the end of the year. And I was thinking this morning about what we do. What do we do when you send us uh, your gifts? Well, we use it to reach people. And uh, this, that you're listening to, this radio program is the most expensive thing we do to reach people. And then when we reach them, we try to teach them that there is a different way to live, and it's a better way. And then the word release came to mind. We want to release them from whatever it is that has them stuck. And we, big part of that, want them to release, let go of a past they cannot change, get out of that shame, and then restore. We want to restore them back, not to their best job or, or their kids or whatever. That's good. We want to restore their relationship with God. Why? Because the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, all these other things are going to be added unto you. That's the number one thing. And Steve, as you mentioned, what we do with the donations we receive, I was shocked to find out how expensive it is for New Life to be on radio. I had assumed previously that New Life made money off of being on radio, and yeah. radio is one of the ways we meet, we reach the most people. And so we so appreciate and value what you folks are willing to donate to New Life because this does cost a great deal of money to be on the airwaves. In the secular world, we would be paid for this, but in the Christian world, um, you pay for the space. And if you don't like paying for the space, there are about seven different ministries that are waiting to pay for the space behind you. Anyway, if you want to join us, 1-800-229-3000. 1-800-229-3000. This is a great, great week to thank God. Thank God for His generosity by showing him your generosity. And uh, we'll give you some tips along the way this week about how not to ruin a really good turkey over family <laughs> conflict. We'll be back after this. Hi, this is Steve Arterman from New Life Live, and Chris Williams and I are doing the Emotional Freedom Workshop. I don't know of anybody 
that wouldn't benefit from emotional freedom. We're all bound or stuck or struggling in some area. What are we going to do there, Chris? Just really help people get clarity around the places where they're stuck in their life. They sort of circle the same mountain of disappointment over and over and over again. You're going to be able to see that mountain clearly and get to a new place of what we call emotional freedom, which is simply I can feel in the world, build a relationship to it, and know what to do with my experiences. The New Life Emotional Freedom Online Workshop is Saturday, December 2nd. Steve Arterburn, Chris Williams, and Dr. Jackie Mac Harris will present information on trauma, depression, codependency, and more. And small group leaders will help you process the information you learn. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or register online at newlife.com. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. I attended every man's battle. Uh, I went kicking and screaming, but I did go. It was a game changer. It truly, it truly saved my life. You know, it, it breathed new life into my recovery. It gave me uh, just a, a different understanding for what recovery truly was. You know, for me, prior to the divorce, recovery was a it was just about getting sober, you know, and stopping the behavior. And EMB helped me understand that although stopping the behavior was important, it was just part of the recovery process. So the workshop helped me to understand that true long-term recovery was more about being restored, being whole. And, you know, I'd read the Every Man's Battle book, and it was a great book, but the workshop was, it was the experience that really was, uh, was key for me. Boy, do I ever love hearing that. And so many, just like he said, didn't want to be there, kicking, screaming. And uh, sometimes when a wife says, don't you think the least you could do is attend this workshop? A guy goes kicking and screaming. And then his life is never the same again. Well, before, yes, go ahead. Steve, I was part of doing a sobriety check-in with a couple who had experienced infidelity and they were able to say, I have been sober for months. And even though there have been temptations, I did not succumb to the temptations. Gentlemen, can you imagine being able to genuinely give that answer to your wife? And not yeah. to be afraid to be asked, but to be excited to be asked. Because you have the answer of sobriety. And every man's battle can help you achieve that. Amen. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. If you want to join us, here's the number. one 800 229 thousand boy would we ever love to talk to you but i told you i was going to tell you a story and um, last week we had a group a gathering of folks that you know we really love these people and they support us and sometimes we do things um with our supporters that you know just build our relationship with them and we love getting to do that okay so woman comes up to me and says, I have, to, I have a gift for you. And so if you're watching on YouTube, she gave me this gift. Now, this gift was created. It's a piece of modern art. It actually is very reflective of a surrealist artist from 1952. But she said, this is my gift to you from our daughter. And her daughter, Mia, had, had been in a psychotic state admitted to a hospital, and I believe that um, probably was being held hostage because she had symptoms that could keep her there for a long time, and they had good insurance. So I told the mother, I said, here's, uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to try to sell you on some new life resource, but here's what I think you ought to do when you see your daughter next time. You ought to be sure that she sees a mother that has hope in her eyes that she's got this, and you're going to take care of her. And then I said, you need to do what my wife does. Get online. Mm -hmm. The symptoms that have been presented by your daughter, find out who is the best in the country. Call them. Ask them if they know anybody better. And if they do, call them. She did exactly that. And Mia is a restored young woman, 19 She's at work right now. She'd be listening to this. She's working, independent. She's an artist. She's productive. Oh. And she gave me a copy of the 10 things she says 
here are the essentials. Here are the things that you need to do if you ever end up with some kind of psychosis or some kind of mental problem. Number one, proper medication. Okay, right? Don't we agree? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, there is a, if there's a situation where you need medication, take the right dose. I think she was, she was so small, I think when she went to the people that could really help her, they discovered that maybe she was getting two or three times the dosage that oh, would be helpful. Of course, that's horrible. Number two is support team, psychiatrist, psychologist, medis medical nurse, whatever you need, support from your parents. Number three, healthy food and supplements. I mean, is this the best list ever? Mm -hmm. I mean, if people would do this, exercise, five, sleep, six, hydration. Who says that? Of course, the brain is so much water, you need to hydrate. CBT, cognitive be behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. She says it unloosened the cogs that medicine couldn't reach. Eight and nine, socializing, helping others, and hobbies. So you, you do fun things with other people, and then in the process, you're helping them. Number 10, faith in God. She said, I accepted Jesus when I was three years old. That uh, this whole disorder, um, you know, it was pretty tough on that faith. And uh, she's come out on the other side. And please know that there is hope to living life to the fullest with a brain mental health disorder. And she says, it's wonderful to know God loves and accepts us no matter the illness, disorder, or what. Now, isn't that fantastic? I love that list. And you know what? Um, it's not really that complicated either. There's a lot of things on there that we all really know. And I think there's a lot of things on there that people could probably even just start to do today. Right. I want to highlight sleep because I'm so glad she included that on the list yep. because lack of sleep over time can lead to psychosis. And we're all mm -hmm. vulnerable to not getting enough sleep, especially if we're sleeping with our smartphone and the alerts right. might be waking us during the middle of the night. And a lot of right. people are falling vulnerable to that. Fabulous list. Anyway, I've got a great piece of art. I uh, was able to talk to <laughs> I talked to her parents at this event we had for our supporters, and then I got to talk to Mia on the phone, and uh, my life is better because of Mia. Your life could be better if you'll do what her mother did. If somebody's really in trouble in your family and you're you're sitting around waiting for God to do what God's waiting for you to do, maybe it's time not to wait anymore. Find the resource, do what you need to do, be courageous, and the blessing will come. Let's go to Diana. New York, New York. She watches on the Internet. We're glad that she does. And, um, yeah, she has called us at 1-800-229-3000. Diana, how are you, and how could we help you today? Yes, hi. How are you? I, I'm looking for uh, advice. Okay. I um, I have been married to my husband for um, 18 years. We have been together for 18 years. We have three children. This is the second time that he uh, makes the same type of behavior. The first time was nine years ago. We had gone through counseling, marriage counseling. Um, I he throughout the first time there was a pornography addiction. He went through every men's battle. I support him all the way through it. Um, we come to today. I am a stay-at-home mom. I homeschool my children. Everything seems to be going well. Everything was fine. I had been saving because I tutor on the side, and I had been saving money all this time on, on my side. I asked him back in 2019 to um, that I wanted to invest this money, and then I gave it to him so he could deposit it because he's a bank manager, and I trusted him all this time. Last Thursday, uh, I was on a retreat, and he sent me a text that he is in $80,000 in debt, that he used all my money, the money that I had previously oh. given him in back in 2019. Mm -hmm. He had given it all to me. He had borrowed money from other people, $25,000 from some, uh, $5,000 here, $80,000 there. There is a lien on the house because he made a, a bad deal. Uh, he forged papers. He opened credit cards under my name. He filed bankruptcy. Okay, so tell us uh, the situation for you right now. What are you having to deal with? with so right now that? I have, so I have three kids. I don't know how to tell them. I don't know what to say to them. Uh, literally, I have nothing. Sorry. 
I don't know how to move forward. And his behavior is completely erratic. He, I don't think he understands it. It's really weird. I am concerned about his mental health. But it is, he feels like like nothing is happening. And mm -hmm. it is, it's, it's really, really awkward. I don't even know how to explain it. Okay. I would like to understand like what is happening and how to move yeah. forward from here. Okay. Now, is he living at home or did he leave? No, he, 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 that is the weird part. Like he pretends like he's holding on tight. So he's holding on so tight to the reality, like to his reality of like, this is nothing bad. Like if I make up, if I make this up to you and, and I do whatever you tell me from now on, then everything is going to be okay. Okay. All right. But so, not, okay. But he's staying at home. He didn't leave you. Yeah. Right. Okay. No. And, and now what's going to happen if, when they, um, if they have to repossess your house or, you know, foreclose on the house? Well, no, he, he, um, he filed for bankruptcy to save the house. Okay. So you're not going to be homeless? No, we just, I just have to okay. um, catch up on the mortgage, on the late okay. mortgage payments. All right. So you're wanting to know, my lawyer. you're wanting to know how this or what and how this can be that he can be there after doing all this um is that right you're wanting to un try to understand it better i want to understand like he's like i don't know some some sort of like why but i don't know if i'm going to be able to get that answer but most importantly like why do i tell the kids i have a 13 year old that he admires his father like and, why do right. i tell them okay. what do i do diana right. diana what, so what? glad you called Alice, what was do you think? Was the money spent in an area of sexual infidelity, or what, what did he spend all this on? Uh, I still haven't found out, like, where did he go, but based on what he says, which I don't believe because I don't believe anything, he's just trying to fix one thing and then never fixed it and then trying to catch up to other things, and then, but it's more, it's like close to $100,000, and we're still on the same, like, there's no money to show. Okay, so what, what do you guys think, first of all, how should she tell her children and then this husband who seems to not be totally aware of reality or is ignoring her feelings about that reality? Mark, what, what do you think yeah, about the, the well, husband part, maybe? Yeah, Diane, this is devastating, what, what's happening, what you're discovering. And, and I wonder if, you know, this you may not know it all yet. Um, it sounds like your husband has some kind of addiction, um, you know, possibly even gambling or something like that, um, because he's not being truthful with you. And so you're still you're in the phase of trying to make sense of what has is happening and, and what the extent is. And he's in a denial phase of trying to say, well, I'll just give you control or I'll just say sorry and you'll fix it and and, and you know, everything will be better. But it's not going to be better. Um yeah, I, I, I think that you guys probably need to get into uh, counseling with someone. Um, and, you know, usually when there's kind of uh, things that are hidden like this, there really needs to be a full disclosure that happens to you so that you can understand the extent of where you're at so that you can then uh, make a decision on how so, to move forward. So, Mark, let's say that we can connect her with a, a counselor someone that uh, knowing their situation makes it affordable but what else can she do i mean the counseling maybe she can't get an appointment for a week or so what does she do now about this husband well I, ideally diana he should tell the children mm -hmm. with you that you all are going through a problem but you have a plan to get help for it and i would i would develop that plan before talking to the kids. I think you said he confessed this to you, so I wonder if there is some stability, some willingness on his part, but you also said his behavior is erratic. So what I'm suggesting is ideal, well, he, and it can't always work this way. Go ahead. Well, he didn't really confess. Uh, he had told my pastor for help, and she, she was busy, and then we went to the retreat together, and she's like, what is going on? Your husband has been calling me desperately, and then I kind of forced it out of him. I asked him to please tell me. But the only reason why he told me was because there was no other way. Like, it, it, it had already come to the limit of everything. Okay. And then right. even, like, I spoke to him on Thursday. And then on, I mean, that was 
Monday, and then on Thursday, he's still hiding, and I'm still finding out more stuff. Okay. So so my hope would be that you give your children a headline that dad and I are dealing with some problems, some financial and some trust problems, and we're going to figure out how to how to get through it. We're going to get some help so that we can get solutions. You want to give them a little bit of information while also giving them hope that you, at the very least, you're doing work on it to resolve it and to handle it. And we'll give you some more when we come back from the break. I want to um, encourage you on some ways to protect yourself for the future. We'll do that after this, and I'm really glad you called. Anybody else, you need some help, want some advice, 1-800-229-3000. 1-800-229-3000, totally free. We don't charge here. You get every penny's worth back at you. We'll take this break and come back for more New Life Live. For the first time in two years, I am free, and I can see God's plan for my life. In January, I got out of an emotionally, physically, and sexually abusive marriage. On October 12th, I was eight months pregnant and went to a doctor's appointment, and they said that my daughter no longer had a heartbeat. I was very angry with God for the marriage that I was in, for the loss of my daughter. Last night, I surrendered my anger, my pain, my frustration, and my bitterness. And I feel the first time this morning when I woke up, that God has an amazing design for my life. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and this is the story of a new life. She took a step of faith, attended a workshop, and now has hope for her future. You can be part of offering hope to others as you step out in faith by donating to New Life Ministries. To make your tax-deductible gift, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or text NLM to 28950. Chris Williams on Coaching. Oftentimes I get asked, what is the difference between therapy and coaching? The biggest difference between the two is that a therapist is going to be looking for a diagnosable mental health condition, whereas a coach is going to look at a particular issue and help a person work through that. If you need a coach, call New Life today and ask about the New Life Coaching Network. Our coaches have been trained and screened with the same intensive process we use for our network counselors. If you're looking at an issue in your life that you just kind of want to change, whether it be your weight or leadership or other areas of behavioral patterns, check out coaching. There can be some really, really helpful things for you. Take control of your life and take action to achieve your goals. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 and talk to us about getting a new life coach. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here in really, really tough situation here with Diana. Uh, Diana, I don't know what you can do based on whatever the court requires in a bankruptcy, but I would want him to not have any credit cards not have any checks, not be able to spend any of the money that's going to be coming in from you, right? Uh, well, yeah. Anything, but, um, I'm, any, anything that you have from whatever, uh -huh. somebody gives you money to support you, yeah. and then you want his money that he's earning to go to you yeah. and for you to be able to spend it, not him. It's going to require more of your time to do all that, if it's possible, it would be great if you had your own account. Now, you may not be able to do this yeah. with the bankruptcy where you're in total charge and you don't ever have to worry about him taking money again. Because sometimes you think you know what's going on and you don't know everything. You end up somehow with generosity or whatever with $5,000 and he takes that and he leaves for good. That's what you want to protect yourself against. And then the other thing is, I think you have to be really direct with your kids. They're of an age that you can tell them. We are in really horrible financial situation. But fortunately, we have a plan. And you do have a plan. You file bankruptcy. You keep the house. We have a plan. And we're going to fix whatever it is that led to this disaster. It's not going to be easy. But we're working together to fix it. 
And then he has been told by you, when you say that, he needs to step up and say, you know, I've had a really tough time these past two or three years. I've made some really bad decisions. I'm not going to make those bad decisions anymore. Your mom is going to take care of the finances. I feel really bad about it, but I'm going to do everything I can to make sure we're back to where we were and that this never happens again. And I like I like that plan, Steve. I think, Diana, though, you also need to protect yourself because you don't, and this is where I was going with the full disclosure, you you don't really know what your options are going to be until you know the extent of what has yeah. happened. And um, I agree with what Steve's saying here is you do need to require full transparency, but you also need to learn how to protect yourself too. And and that might be a legal consultation mm -hmm. for yourself to That's see right. how you can, you know, start to separate, you know, your responsibility or, or what you're going to be on the hook for financially from his decisions. And alert the kids to the changes you know will be coming. We'll, we're going to be reining in our mm -hmm. spending for a time. Dad yeah. might be sleeping on the couch. Dad might be staying elsewhere for a while. Alert them. Invite their questions. But know that you don't have to have answers to all their questions. But give them permission to ask and to express what they're feeling. All right. I'm glad you called. And um, I hope and pray that something we've said uh, has been helpful. And I want to see if there's any way, you know, the closest one ever or the one we do every year online that we can get you in an intimacy in marriage workshop. But right now, you really, really need the help of that pastor, the help of um, some legal help. I guess you've already gotten that with the bankruptcy. And I'm going to ask everybody to pray for you. By the way, every man's battle, you heard the testimony at the beginning here. The next one is December 1st through the 3rd. And um, I love it when Bill W. said, uh, you know, you tell me you're grateful for all the things you have. I don't really care to hear about how grateful you are. I want to see what you're doing about it. And if you're grateful that you're still married, but you have a sexual addiction, or you're grateful that you're still married and, and there's lust all over the place, or you're grateful you didn't kill yourself out of shame, why don't you go do something about it and heal? December 1, 2, and 3. Or you call. If you're a woman that's been hurt, you call. Make the call, and we'll help you get him the help that he needs. That number's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Our number here, 1-800-229-3000. Let's go to Tim Lexington, Kentucky. Listens on Sirius XM, channel 131. 1 p.m. Eastern. Hello there, Tim. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing okay. What's going on? Well, I wanted to ask a question concerning how to forgive. I won't say forgive as much how to confront my mom. I have been a caretaker for about three or four years. Uh, and she has used a lot of manipulation to uh, kind of control the situation. And uh, she's now in the nursing home and after about two and a half, three years. But I, I just, I have a lot of, I don't, I don't know if it would be unforgiveness or what, but I just don't know how to approach my mom to okay. tell her how, you know, I feel, you know. Right. So what's the... What's the thing that comes to mind the most that you hold against her or that you think was wrong? Well, she she used manipulation uh, on my dad uh, before he passed away. Uh, she used manipulation on me to keep me at her house. Uh, I would stay five to six nights a week. It, it, it hurt my relationship with my wife. Uh, it hurt my ministry. I'm also a pastor, uh, and it even got to the point that I thought of uh, just ending my life because it was just, it just got to that point. Uh, okay. You know, God, God helped me get over that, but I still have the issue of you know how to, every time I see my mom, I'm just like. Yeah, Tim, you call the right place.
for most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was sort of vaguely familiar that the 12 steps had some origination in the Bible. I found life recovery. And one of the things I liked so much was that it had such a broad appeal. It wasn't limited to just alcohol or drugs, that it was addressing a, a wide range of problems. At New Life, we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country. They take place online, in conference calls, and in person. And if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. We have startup materials, leader's guides, CDs, Bibles, and more, all with discounts available for groups. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and ask for Terry Ward. The 12 Steps have long been a great help to people in recovery because much of the 12 Steps power comes from the fact that they capture principles clearly revealed in the Bible. The 12 Steps is really a pattern for all of us as Christians. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. We're talking with Tim. Got some problems there with his mom. Now, Tim, I'm going to tell you why I'm so glad you called us. And then, and then I'm going to say this, then I'm going to turn it over to Allison to Mark. I tell my kids this. I tell everybody I can this. There's a lot of talk about the father wound. And with men, it's kind of a macho thing to go to work on that father wound. But I'm telling you, it's everybody's job to get over their mother. Mm -hmm. You And this is the thing Dave Stoop and I talked about all the time. Alice, you were talking about listening to Dave and I. That's right. On, we talked about all of the, the heartache people go through because they never get over their mother. And you have to do that. You have to grieve what you didn't get from her. You have to grieve the decisions you made because of her. But if you don't do that, you're never going to be the man that God called you to be. Now, I'm going to ask you one question, and then we'll go to Alice and Mark. You were suicidal. You were so distraught. Did you ever get any professional help through any of this stuff? Uh, yes, I did. I'm a veteran, and uh, I went through the VA counseling. Okay, and, good deal. Uh, she was right. very helpful. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Alice, what are you thinking when you hear this kind of situation? Well, Tim, I, I feel for you as I as I worked on my relationship with my own mom. I did not give my mom a no to one of her requests until I was in my mid-20s, Tim. Wow. I didn't think I had the right to. I thought a good Christian daughter always said yes to what a mother asked. And so I believed it was my obligation to always say yes to her. And so you and I have a personal struggle, Tim, where we have to build up our strength to be able to figure out how do we honor our mothers, but how do we separate from them as well in order to give them good, honest no's. And that's a very difficult thing to do when you're trying to be a good adult child to your parent who has a lot of needs and is depending on you. And so my suggestion, Tim, is to go to your mother with humility. And you might say something along the lines of, Mom, I care for you, and I'm, I've been carrying a weight on my chest that I need to admit to something in mm -hmm. order to better our relationship and to kind of clear the air. Mom, I realize that I have struggled to say no and to be honest about what I really think and what I need in our relationship. And that that's my work, it's something I got to keep working on. Mom, I think you also put a lot of pressure on me. And so it was difficult for me to say no to you. I'm carrying some resentment. So I want to confess that so that I can get past this, so that I can clean up my heart. 
Yeah, and I think what Steve is saying here, Tim, when he's saying get over your mother, I think he's, he's saying that we all eventually need to become adults, right? And and when we become adults, we become peers with our parents and, and they become parents and now not in verb anymore, right? And we have those two parts about ourselves. We have the me part, right, which is the individual piece that Alice is saying. And then we have the we part, which is how we are in relationship with each other. But I think the, the me part of you needs to take responsibility that you are part of this dynamic. You've allowed your mom to take advantage of you. It's not been right that she has, and you've probably been trained and conditioned that way. Um, but you have to take responsibility for that part. And anytime we feel powerless, we need empowerment. And so what Alice is saying is the right thing to do is to take that act of empowerment, confront your mom, and set boundaries. Now, how do you feel about that? What's been said here? Uh, that that's good. Um, I've sort of kind of done that before on a smaller scale, but every time I did, she would just start crying and said that I'm agreeing with everybody else and that she doesn't need the help. That so that so that's so needs. that's the manipulation piece. To- Tim is what she's doing. She's looping you back in the cycle. It's like you exit the freeway and she joins you back on on the entryway uh, ramp. And so that's where you need to hold your boundaries of you, me, because boundaries aren't really boundaries unless they have a consequence attached to it. Well, I would like for you to get over your mother or begin the process of getting over your mother before you ever talk to your mother. Like, I wouldn't okay. be talking to her for a while about this, especially if you're still kind of like you are, and then she's like she is. Get some help and, and do some things so that when you do engage, it's going to be productive. But she could die tomorrow, and I want you to be over your mother, even though you never say anything to her because she, would, she dies tomorrow. Because, look, you're a pastor. You know the capabilities of the heart you can transform your heart you know that you just need somebody to help you do that alice you have a thought here well part of that work tim is identifying when your mom starts to cry again what emotion does it elicit in you and then what's the compulsion in your behavior which is probably to fix it to get her to stop crying to get her to stop hurting which is understandable and yet the ability to know that what my words are probably hurting my mom but they're not harming her. There this is go. for her good, so I don't get yeah. drawn back into fixing it because she needs to feel this hurt so that she can have the, the better likelihood of realizing how she negatively impacts people. Now, doesn't that feel better, thinking um, about that? I, I like that. It, it, it's not hurting her. It's not harming her. not harming her. I like that. That's, yeah. It's not harming her, right. I like that. That struck a note when she said that. I, I think, Good. Tim, you'll benefit from reading the book How We Love because I think you have a pleaser imprint. Yeah. And, you know, the, the best analogy I know is the dentist. It, it hurts, but it's not harmful. And if you don't endure that hurt, you end up losing a, maybe a mouth mm-hmm. even. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's horrible. Everything gets affected by it. Now... I want to remind everybody that you can go to our app. If you don't have it, you can download it. And at the App Store, if you're looking on YouTube, it looks just like this thing. Our logo there with a tree and a brain in the middle of it. Many people say, really? There's a brain in there? Yes, because that's that's what we want to see God transform. And so you can go there. You could... uh, Go to the app, the you go the newlife.com. So many ways you can see or hear this program at any time you want to hear it. And we're grateful that we get to do it. Now let's go over here and how about we talk with Lynn, Austin, Texas. And um, yeah, she listens or watches on YouTube. Lynn, how you doing? Hi. Hi guys. Hello. Um Hello, Steve and Dr. Denton and Mark. Um, Hi, I'm Lynn. Lynn. I'm mm-hmm. calling from out of... <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, I just found you on YouTube. So I, I, I want to take you to your challenge here um, okay. to answer um, a hard question. I'm a okay. part of a women's ministry. I'm sorry about that. I'm a part of a women's ministry, and I hope you guys can hear me clearly. If not, I, I can, can try to... Um, no, we do. We okay, can hear great. you. 
Okay, great. I'm a part of a um, women's ministry via uh, my church leadership approval, and I'm dealing with a lot of conversations about um, surrounding political despondence or social political despondence. And how do I or how do we um, remove the rhetoric and even the ideologies of God, of the God of the Republican and the God of the Democrat and the God of the Independent from our doctrines and from these scriptures? How do we do that to create more of a constancy around scriptures to give hope as a lot of the women I'm dealing with are having panic attacks and and they look around and they see things are not right uh, or political figures are not um, in line with how to love and be loving. So how do we still promote the gospel, the gospel of love in constancy? Because I'm dealing with ladies that I'm trying to give hope on these this beautiful word of God that God has left us, but then they see a contradiction okay. with some so, of our Christian parties. Well, let me tell you this. I contradict God's word every day. I mess up every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect every day. So one thing is that we have to realize that there are a lot of imperfect people who are Christians living an imperfect life. And politics especially, um, it seems like people get so pressured that it's hard for them to stick with their values. And so you're going to have inconsistency and compromise all along. But let me ask you this, and I'm not endorsing that. I'm just saying that it's an imperfect world. And these people, they say they're Christians, but it sure doesn't sound like or look like it. But there sure are a lot of people in politics that do. We just don't hear about them. They don't make headlines. What kind of setting is this coming up in all of these thoughts and discussions about the conflict? Is it a Bible study or what is it in your ministry? Yes, we're studying, we're studying the, um, currently we're studying the, um, the knowledge of good and evil. Okay. And so of course... Well, let me just say why. this. The why. I'm going to help you. We want it to be a Bible study, not a babble study, right? <laughs> and um, sometimes... People love hearing themselves talk so much. They don't get a talk show. They get a Bible study to do it. And so I'll help you with this. We'll help you with this when we come back. You're listening to New Life Live, 1-800-229-3000. That's the number. We'd love to talk with you. We've got a whole other hour and 15 minutes to go. So you've got time to get in. We'll be back. We all face days where life throws us a curveball and our routines or plans get disrupted. Things we wanted to do are forced to take a backseat to the unexpected demands of the day. If you normally listen to New Life Live on a radio station, well, you might not be able to that day. And on these hectic days when you're feeling stressed or frazzled, hearing the sound of counsel given on New Life Live is just what you need to navigate the unexpected things of life. Every time I'm troubled or I have a problem, I'll cut on new life. And there's always, always something that is said that is helpful to me. By listening, I have learned more than I can ever express about how God wants me to live. Download the New Life app for the easiest way to listen wherever you are and at a time that's convenient for you. Or watch the show on our YouTube channel. You can even subscribe to our podcast from your favorite podcast provider. You never have to miss a day of new life. Wherever you are, we are. I've been listening to New Life for many years. I've gone to a few workshops. I want to support a ministry that helps people connect with God and with others and gives them the tools to help transform their lives. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, We'll send you the new member thank you gift of all eight 100-day devotionals, including 100 Days of Healing, 100 Days from Freedom from Shame, and 100 Days of Freedom from Anger. There are also ongoing benefits like the monthly Club New Life CD or download, access to the Club New Life video library, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, discounts on workshops, and quarterly online meetings with Steve. 
call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Hardman here. Lynn uh, is talking about a ministry where politics it just causes all this conflict. stuff. Lynn, the, um, one of the things we say about New Life Live is that it's a uh, politically free zone. We're going to talk about politics here, even though it's a politically free zone. But do you know why it's a politically free zone? Um, it's because we don't let people talk about politics. Someone wants to bring up why their party or something is the right party. We tell them, I'm sorry, you've got the wrong program. You have to call Bob's political talk show or whatever. And... And so that's what I'm going to encourage you to do is to go back to the next Bible study and say, hey, love you guys. This is a Bible study, not a Babel study. We're going to focus on God's word, not our words. And we're going to focus on the truth of the Bible that we understand, not the behaviors of others that we don't understand that seem to contradict our our beliefs and values. How's that? Amen. Anything to point, uh, any man, I'm like over here teasing. <laughs> what? And, and Lynn, I, I wonder if that's, that's not the final thing. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, Lynn, I, I wonder if what Steve is saying here really is kind of the dynamic. It, it's that, you know, there's maybe one or two, I'm wondering, uh, women in the Bible study who can tend to lead it and derail what you're trying to do. And, and, and I wonder if the dynamic is that you don't really know how to redirect them. And I think what Steve is saying is these are good words, right? It, it's we, We're not wanting to put our faith in people. We're wanting to put our faith in principles and in values and in, and in God's word. And what does God's word say about this? And so I wonder if, if your opportunity is learning how to redirect um, when it starts to go awry. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the things that I, I we try to emphasize in our Bible studies with this particular um, women's ministry is women rarely have venues in the church where we can um, debate, if you will, or have um, different viewpoints and still have unity. And so I think that was the reason why I didn't know how to read redirect these questions. We're not trying to set up a dogmatic environment where, um, but we do want to um, keep the Word of God as its authority. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. So, so I agree. And mm-hmm. go ahead. So we won't have uniformity in this Bible study. There will no. never be uniformity because I do have some women that, you know, are going to vote Republican. And I, I know I'm going to have some women that are going to vote Democrat. I'm just trying my best to be the mediator. <laughs> well, look. Because uh, the rhetoric can be very hard sometimes. If a person can't understand why somebody would vote differently than them, and they're convinced that their way is absolutely the, the godly way, then you really don't understand people. People get confused all the time. And the person that thinks this could be confused themselves. It's just human nature. So if we can't see why somebody would believe exactly the opposite of us, then we don't really see people. People are, it's a fallen world. People are messed up. The best thing we can do is not try to shame them into believing like me, but help them to see that my beliefs are so real, I can accept the fact that you don't believe or you don't vote like I do. And you can still in your heart think, and I'm 100% right. <laughs> They're wrong. But you don't have to show that. All right. I'm so glad you called. I will uh, send you a copy of the One Year Bible for Women. It's uh, I, I have to go to one more call because we just have to do this. There's so many calls lined up. And if you will hang on, um, I'll tell you, we're, we're going to go to you in the next program. Real quick, Terry, you're going to have to, from Galveston, you're going to have to tell us the problem quickly, and then we're going to give you an answer. Okay, as you speed down the freeway, I barely, barely hear you, but go ahead. 
ask us a question. You can hear me. You can hear me though. Go ahead and ask us a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, because that's why I'm saying go ahead and ask us a question. Okay, I'm sorry I'm driving and I can't tell if my radio's on or if I'm hearing you on my phone. Well, turn your radio off and hear me on your phone. Okay, so I have three daughters. They're 32, 31, and 22. Um, my 31-year-old has not spoken to me in almost five years. Why? I asked her what Why? it is. I, I, she won't tell me. Well, I've what happened five her, years ago? Had, what do you think is the ago, reason? She was, five years ago, she was living with me. And I had to kick her out because I was walking on eggshells in my own house. Um, she's very moody, and I didn't want that negative energy in my house. Well, okay, so and it seems to me like that she's not speaking to you because you kicked her out. It doesn't mean it was wrong for you to kick her out, but it doesn't seem like there's must have, much okay, of a, a mystery. Wait a minute. Go ahead. Wait a minute. That okay. was the third time she had lived with me, and I kicked her out. Okay. So, she will not tell anybody what it is, what I've done. I've asked her to please tell me so I can apologize, admit it, or deny it, or, you know, what is it I did? Okay, so it sounds come, like to me she's not going to do that. So the question would be, you kicked your daughter out third time, she won't speak to you, won't tell anybody why. Rather than being stuck on she won't tell me why, I'm going to ask mark and alice to tell you the brilliant thing to do rather than stay stuck on why what you should be doing now about her let's start with you alice yes. what do you think i think there are two things terry she may be stuck in a character deficit here where if she's not doing any work on herself, she's gonna continue to be moody and irritable and you won't get answers out of her. So there's some acceptance, some spiritual and emotional acceptance work for you to do that to not expect something different from your daughter. When we have an expectation that she's gonna give me the answer, we're continually disappointed and frustrated. Yeah. So you've gotta reframe that. And the other area that you have a lot of power over, Terry, is to be able to look at your own character defects and shortcomings as a mom that we all have. Because coming up with your own list of what have I done wrong to hurt anybody in my life, especially my three daughters, you'll be able to get the answers that you can't get from her. And you can ask that question, tell me about my shortcomings and what it's been like to be my daughters. You can ask that of your other two girls and that will help fill in some of the answer for you of, she, she left because yeah. of her own stuff she was struggling with, but also because of your some of your shortcomings. And rather than focus on what's what was wrong with me, focus on what's right about her and tell her what you think was wrong with you. Mark? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the abridged version here, because we've got one minute left, is really yeah. just to be able to go to her here, Terry, and invite her into a relationship um, and say, listen, I love you. I want to restore the relationship with you. I'd love to sit down and talk about it and have you share with me what I can do better. Um, and, and then you just wait. And that's all you can really do at this point if she doesn't want to engage with you is just to keep inviting her back to the table and help her see that she's the one keeping the relationship stuck, the relationship stuck in the end. And so the headline here is when you have a child, an adult child, and they won't tell you why they're upset or it's strange, start writing some letters to mm -hmm. them, affirming them, telling them you care. But if it's five years of why... Did you not return my phone call or my email or my text? If it's five years of wondering, give it up. Go to connection and try to redeem it. We love you. And if you appreciate what we're trying to do here, would you support us in a big way here at year end? It makes all the difference in the world. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll send you to Henry's book, Trust. If you want to join us in the next program, 1 800 229 3000. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1 800 New Life. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, thank you for watching New Life Live. You know, New Life Live is a Christian counseling program where we deal with the hard questions about life, relationships, kids, free choice, freedom of will, whatever. It's all right there on New Life Live every day, every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. If you want to call into the live broadcast, you can find the schedule on newlife.com or click the social media link right below. You can see every episode of New Life Live on the New Life YouTube channel. Watch it with a friend. Watch it later. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss another episode. So if you want to listen on the go, download the app. The link is right below. And I hope if you need some information, if you want to get some help, you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And I'll see you next time.